Hi everybody, I've been getting uh, requests for tutorials on how I do my beads. Now I've done a few different kinds of beads. The previous tutorial that I did on my thing is for these beads, which are mostly fabric and then one that I made with some um, um, napkin. So uh, I have those ones. This particular tutorial, I'm also going to talk a little bit about um, about what I use and what I have found with the pile that I've made now, a couple of dozen, and my thoughts on what is better technique and what is uh, something you should look for when making your own beads. Now, as you'll see from you know, all the beads that I've made, that... Uh, or dangles that I've made is there are actually two different types of wire that I've been using. Let's see if I can do this right because I always forget where my camera is. Um, so as you can see this is pretty thick. It's and it's very very sturdy. There's no wobble, nothing in these. They're they're quite nice and they're they're this wire, this particular wire, which should be 22 gauge. Oh, I could add a term on that one. Uh, should be 22 gauge um, is what I like. It's a thicker wire. Um, and I particularly enjoy this wire to work with because it's, it's not only malleable, but it doesn't seem fragile. And if you twist it, it's not going to break easily. Uh, the other wires that I first started using were these ones. Um, and they are thinner, thinner wire. And although I I like it, and I it's not that much of a difference between this. Like, see, there's not really a whole lot of difference. Or is that one of my thicker ones? Oh yeah, sorry, that is one of my thicker ones. <laughs> sorry about that. Oh, I made a mistake. So this is a thinner wire, and you'll see the difference in the thinner wire. And my older ones have a, a thinner wire as well. Uh, they were a lot harder to get sturdy. And if you look at the just the loops themselves, if you look at the loops, and oops, over here, sorry guys. Um, you look at the loops and you will see that that is much thicker. I also learned to loop differently as well, which is what I will show you that I learned from Pam at the Paper Outpost, and I really like that technique for several reasons. One, because this wire is so slim and you're putting jump rings on, you have to really make sure that you get them like tightly closed so that this does not come off, which I have done, but it's still a little bit more of a stressor. Whereas with this one, because there's at least two loops there, two or three loops is what I do, it's not going to come out of that jump ring easily at all, at all. So I do like that. Same with the bottom. When you put the charm on, you're going to have a jump ring. So those are things that I have been looking at, like since I made these. And um, I do still think these are absolutely adorable. And I will still sell them, but they are a little bit more delicate. And I do mention that when I sell these on Etsy, that they are. So... Though some of my techniques have changed a little and have evolved, um, I still think that this is good. Like this wire is still, I still have lots of the thinner wire and it is made for jewelry making. Um, so I do have some of that and I will use it in, in, in ways like, like this, like just wrapping around the beads like this with this, this is another technique for a boho bead in which you use fabric I will do I don't want to make this a really long video so I'm going to break it down into these type and these types because this will be one video which is what we're going to do in this one and then the, uh, this is a fabric with a sari ribbon and in fibers attached to it so we're going to do that um, I have here some of my supplies that I use, uh, like for, for the paper ones, like this. I use an old book. This just happens to be an old Freemason book. 
that I will use uh, for these ones. Now, and for these ones, uh, I will use lots of other things, including I'm not limited to tissue paper. And I'll teach you one uh, in this one. I'll teach you my technique and how I do um, script type like this. I like that. And I'll I will tell you what I use for the insides and stuff like that. So there's my intro. We've got lots of things to work with and lots of things to do. So I'll stop babbling and we'll get on to making some beads or dangles, whichever you prefer to call them. All right, let's go. Okay, so let's work on some like this. Um, so firstly, what you wanna start with is the inside. I personally will use, uh, these are paper straws that I just bought at the store. Unfortunately, they have a pattern on them. Uh, but the dollar store does have plain white ones, which next time I will definitely get, but I do want to use these ones first. At least not want not. This is the inside of, um, I have a dog, so that's the inside of the um, poop bag roll. Um, so you can use that, but with it being paper, you can also just wrap the paper around, say, an ice pick and that will make the hole as well. So, uh, but personally, I like using the straw just because I I can use less paper that way or, you know, I don't know. I just, I just like having that structure already to go. So I don't have to think about it. Um, so I'm going to take this. I don't know about any of you, <laughs> but I, keep a pair of garden gloves in my shop because inevitably the Modge Podge will stick. Yeah, gets yucky. Clean that up. So all I do really is you can sometimes I, I rip it straight. This just happened not to be ripped straight. I just take some Modge Podge. I'll put it on the straw like this. And you are going to get messy hands. Well, I get messy hands. You guys don't, but I get messy hands all the time. That's probably why they're cracking so bad. Anyway, then I just take you know, some of this. I put the, you want the words on the outside. And you roll. Now, because this paper is dry, very dry and kind of, old and it splits easily. I do use the Mod Podge to sort of help keep it moist as well. So rip it off there. Let's see, you can even hear it rip because it's just so dry. Wrap it around and if you want more up at the top, if you want it a little longer, you can just Rip that off and add more on the top. Easy peasy, just like that. Now, sometimes I, I will be careful and how I put it on so that you can actually read some of it, but just for this purpose, I'm not too worried about that because we're going, I'm gonna go through this fairly quickly for video purposes. So, so there's that, there, that's how I make that type of bead. Now for this one, it's not that much different. Um, this is a script thing that I have stamped out. And, oh, get off me. What I did to make the script is I use a pattern. This is from a pattern and the tissue is kind of brown. So it's already looking kind of like, um, like vintage paper. So I take that, I take a script stamp, and uh, you have to use, the most important thing about that is you have to use an ink that's not going to run. So I use stays on. And that way it goes on and it's not gonna go anywhere. And then, I, because this has got the red and white, I am going to put a little bit of white tissue underneath. Just wrap 
quick wrap of some white just to because I got a feeling that red's going to show through and I don't want to waste all of that on this. So let's try and keep this in frame too, Wendy. I'm just going to wrap a bit of white tissue around it. With it being white, you don't uh, tissue, you don't have to worry about so much where it's going or stuff like that. And wrap some more. It's going to be mushy because that is very thin stuff. So it's going to be a little mushy, people. Now, it's a dirty job, but someone's got to do it, right? So as you can see, it will also start coming off a bit in your hands because your hands get all gooky. So let's just wipe that off my hands. It's pretty dry. Now is that going to show through a bit? It will a bit. But also... So I'll just put a little bit more just on this part. And you can always trim this even um, later on. Uh, I have done that. You know, you can cut it shorter. These were just, they were only pre-cut because I, I made my little TikTok video and I need some tubes. But I don't like to waste. And see, I've actually gone over the end, but it doesn't matter because we are going to be covering it all. Yeah, I'm all sticky again. So then you take this tissue paper and start rolling. Oops, sorry. Put a little bit of this on just so I don't have it all over my hands all the time. And you start rolling this on. Like I said, don't worry about being over the edges at this point. It really isn't something you should worry about. See, it's disappearing. But uh, like I said, if we hadn't have put that white underneath, it would have taken a lot more rolling to get that. And usually I only use half of one of these. So, but this time I think I'll use it all just to make sure everything's covered well. And I just keep rolling. I was terrible at rolling cigarettes when I was young. You say cigarettes. And then once you have no script, you don't really want that on it. So you can just rip it off like that. And there you go. There's the script one. So we need to let those dry. Um, and then when those dry, we'll come back and I will show you the next step. All right. Hey, everyone. So they're pretty much dry. I've got a couple of older ones that are completely dry as well. I just want to show you, okay, you can take, like this was just the cover of some little small papers. I took a piece of it, didn't take very much. Like even if you have something there, I could use that and I could make that. Because there's enough there, I would cut it there. And then there's enough left over to wrap around and make, and put that paper all the way around. Plus I music sheets. Um, this is a uh, dictionary. So I've got a few of those. Um, then this is some more um, tissue paper that I have. So it's kind of pretty with all the gold on it. And this is another kind of tissue paper. So there's so many options for you to do for for this. Um, just if you want to make it match your journal, you know, go with that theme or whatever it is, you can, you can do, you can do that. So the next thing I do, of course, because it's me, I have to distress everything. So the next stage is basically distressing. Um, I like to make sure I get the ends here just to make sure everything, kind of, everything just kind of blends in more. And then I'll run a little bit down the side just just to age it a little bit more it's already tea stained but that's fine and if there's any little clumps of glue it will kind of pick it up more but it won't it won't be noticeable and it all works so 
not to worry about that. And even the script, I will, I will, and if you don't like the end, say if it's kind of looking a little mushy like that and you want to get rid of that, I use a knife. So, and I kind of cut it off nicely. There. And you still have your nice little circle going down there. So just dip that right in there. And you can use, like, this is a vintage photo, but I have also used black inks on the, on the edges. And uh, it just makes it look a little, to me, cuter. <laughs> but, I mean, the, it's not huge noticeable, but it will make whatever you put on top pop a little bit more, I think. You might see a little bit of red there, so I'm just going to cut that off. Because it's too much of a pain to try to go and cover it. So it's not a big deal. Just cut it off. And if you get mush like that at your end, you just take a or a paintbrush or whatever and you fix it. And that one needs to be cut too. So I will cut that one. Again, it mushed a little bit. So you just fix it a little bit. And you keep going. There you go. But they really don't take that long to dry. And even it, like this one, is uh, the pattern paper. I just used some of the lines of the pattern. I, it's still a tiny bit damp because it's just because I had to put white tissue underneath. But I'm not too worried because it will dry. And I'm not really uh, manipulating that part that much. So I'm not too worried about it. This is a Borealis, which is kind of neat. So you, you can go go with your theme of whatever your journal is. If you're making these to go with your journals, or that makes kind of makes a gold pop a bit more. And this one, it probably won't make a huge difference, but I just get the ends at least. Um, so that's that. Well, I didn't do this one. Oops. Like things looking a little dingy, like they've been around a while, especially when it comes to the scroll type things. I try, you know, the paper ones, I like to make them look old like this. And it just seems to add to the mystery of it or not so much authenticity because we all know it's not real, real. So, but it just kind of adds something and I like that, I like that adds something. There, I think I got them all now. I'm gonna put that away. So now the next step is of course the wiring. And as I said, I'm using the thicker wire these days just because I like a thicker wire and I'm going to be using the copper looking wire. Oh yay, don't worry about that. So I usually cut off, if I'm gonna be wrapping it, that's the biggest thing. Cause you're gonna to have to, when you wrap, you're going back twice. So I usually look at the size of the bead and I'm going to add some beads. So a lot of times I cut around, yeah, yeah, that would be around 13 inches just because I really don't want to run out if, especially if you're wrapping. And then what I do, like I said, I got this from uh, Pam at the paper outpost is I don't do it exactly the same as her. <laughs> I'm not as skilled as she is, but I start wrapping around. Makes a nice thick coil to three, and then when, and you do your bend. So it's like that. It's nice and tight. And then you start putting whatever beads you want on it. And I will just grab some beads here. And as I said, as I sorted them all yesterday, you would hope this won't be hard to do. Okay, so I want some glass beads. I want some seed beads. And seed beads are crazy to get away on you. So I usually just pour a few on the top here. So I get an assortment of them. Um, I like these little ball cap things. Our bead caps. Got these little spacers. 
that we can use. Uh, well, plus we have, where is it? Was the smaller ones? There's a smaller one, and where is, one moment. Uh, I think they're those little, they're like these, but they're my brass ones. Uh, had them yesterday. I know I did. I'll be right back. And of course they were sitting right there, anyway. <laughs> Bead hats, I call them. Um, so, anyway, so let's make it look like an old, something old. So we'll take this one, cut our wire, and do it on that. So I put a seed bead on first because I want to kind of make it look old. I generally take, oh, glue. I will generally take a darker bead. So I'll put my seed bead on. Then I will put, uh, I have these lovely green beads here. Oops, I forgot my cap. I'm always forgetting something because it's a small one. We want a small cap. So there's a small cap. And then the bead. And then I will do a spacer. I don't have the best hand, so a lot of times I will end up using tweezers to do this. Then you do a spacer. And then you do the little hat. This is what I do anyway. You can do it any way you wish, but. This is how I do this one, this style. You do the hat, then you do a larger bead. And then I will do a large cap because this large cap is gonna be at the top of my thing. Then you put your thing through. So that's what it's looking like so far. Cute. And then at the bottom we have to do another large cap. And then you don't have to always do it exactly the same. Um, I like to change it up a little bit. So I will put like maybe a different bigger one at the bottom or even bigger. And then I'll do a large cap on top of that one. And then I'll do a small cap to go to a smaller bead. And then maybe go back to this one. Come on. I don't have my magnifying glass here. Um, and then do the cap, little hat. And then uh, I can do, I can go straight to doing the seed bead, which I think I might do on this one. Uh, let's see, what do we have here? A small bead. Oh, there's a pretty little one. Too pink, maybe. That's purple. It'd be nice to do something a bit more brown. What do I have here? I have uh, more seed beads here. Let's see what else we can find in here. I know I have a lot of darker ones. There we are. There's the black one. And I'm gonna put that one. I'll go one on top. Why not? There we go. Now, so now we got to do our end on this side. We want to do our loops. So I grab it, push it down. And these are flexy, so don't worry, but they will actually open up a little bit if you do it a little too tight. I grab it, I wrap it around here. And 
As I said, this is just my technique. I'm sure there are much better ones around. That's the third. And then I'm going to go around. Tighten it a little bit. Because I'm trying to snug this up. Because I, I don't like them too wobbly. There we go. Okay, so I actually have too many twists, so I will untwist a little bit. And then, sorry, I'm going to start this out just a little bit. You don't even have, I don't even worry about doing three at this end usually. This is, see, this is where I need my, excuse me guys, I just got to go underneath my magnifying glass for a moment because I really like to get the it right at the top of the seed bead there and get it all nice and snugged in there so all nice and snug and then we get to do the fun part of just doesn't have to be anything strong it have to be a big wrap to start wrapping around as you can see I did not quite make it long enough because I put that extra bead in there. I didn't quite make it long enough, but there is a way to save this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that and I'm going to wrap it under here. I need my magnifying glass again. Sorry, guys. Here. I don't know if you guys can see this or not. I might be at a camera. I'm just taking the wire and I'm turning it in to underneath that cap so that the wire is in there and then what what you can do is take just another piece of wire and you can wrap it under that cap like so around and then you continue can continue the wrap around to the top. Like that. And you cut it off. Just as you can. So Pam, it happened to me too. I didn't make the wire long enough. <laughs> and it happens. I mean, we're all doing guesstimating here. So sometimes that happens or, you know, you can take it apart again. It's not extremely hard to do. So you could always take it apart again and I'm just getting the wires more underneath that top one, just so that nothing is really sticking out here. Party it up. Sorry, guys. There. I'm just pushing those wires down under there. So it won't be noticeable. And it's not really noticeable. I mean, it still looks pretty good. But, like I said, if you if you want, if you feel you have it, you can always take it apart. It's not really hard. And you can reuse that wire for a shorter one. This is a very long one. I think I guesstimated for something a little smaller. But this is how it looks. And I think it looks pretty good. Uh, helps if you have some light on it, Wendy. And that's that one. And I will continue to make more. Um, but that is basically how I make them. Most of the time, I, I guess the wire right. Uh, I mean, of course, the 13 inches is going to be... That's, that's a pretty long one, which I don't usually do. That's a rarity that I do something that long. See, that one's about that long, too. But... Um, but I don't do them often that long. I usually do them a couple of inches long or two and a half inches long at the most. But um, every once in a while, they, they don't get cut the same. So let's do one more where I don't mess it up. 
<laughs> How's that sound? And I'll show you. Maybe I'll do a gold one just. Uh... Okay, so again. Twist it. You get your three and then you fold back once and then that I can kind of just cut it off. Give it a little snug, my flats, to make sure everything's in there nice and snug. There we go. And we're gonna do a short gold one like that. Um, so we want things a bit brighter, bit goldier so let's get some a seed bead to start we do have gold we do have white so we can do so long gold that seed bead and how about a white one too there and then we can do a small cap because usually I do a small bead next and then got some nice crystal ones now here and clear ones. Uh, pink, lots of pink. Because um, it's pretty flashy, so we don't need anything too flashy to go with it. So we've got a lot of these ones. So I think I'm going to go with one of these. So it should be a smaller bead. Do have something smaller? Oh, here's a cute little heart. Why don't we do a little heart? But then I don't want the bead cap on. See? You always got to think. Why do we get... You can do the bead cap at the bottom, but it just doesn't look right at the top. I find. Make sure you don't put it on upside down. There. Run that up. Heart. And then I would put the a gold cap. We want a gold cap. Because we're doing it in gold this time, Wendy. So, or a gold spacer. Silver, that's more gold. How about we do a gold spacer? Then we'll do, I think I'll do a gold hat first. There, a gold hat. Bead or white bead, clear bead. And then we want a gold, another gold. One of these big ones, because you don't want the small ones, because going they can be too small for the shape of the straw. These ones are pretty big, so they definitely won't go inside of it. These in. There we go. And then you kind of re semi repeat it on the other side. Uh, there we go. So we, except I'm going to put a larger one on the other side. And then <laughs> the little hat. And then our little spacer, a gold one. Gold. Um, and then another small glass one. Let's go with a small glass one like this. And then we want a white bead. I need more white beads, I think. Clear ones. Just 
clear. But I would like to find a white. I do like that, but I would like to find another one. There we go. All right. So that looks pretty. So then we'll twist it again. Twist it. So I want to try and get it snug in there. Twist it until it's kind of snug. There we go. We got around twice, which is good. There. And now we'll wrap this around again. Up to here. And then when you get up to the top, you twist it right around. And you can adjust where you've got your wire. Make it look nice and straight. Like I said, remember these little these little hat like things? They will they will open up a little bit. So if you want when you're making it snug, so don't worry about that. And once you have that twisted around, I'm just gonna check and see how tight it is. It's nice and tightly twisted around. And then I snip the end off. Give that a little squeeze. And then I'll go back. Sometimes this gets... Of course, if you want to make it longer, like that was 13 inches, so if you want more wrapping around, you're going to have to add probably close to uh, a half an inch to an inch for each time you want it to wrap around. But that's that's just a basic one, and I think it's kind of pretty. I hope you guys like it. And that's basically how I do these. I will come back and show you a final thing of all the ones I've got here and what they look like. And we'll wrap that up. Okay, guys, I'll talk to you soon. Hello, everyone. So let's wrap this up for now. I've made a few more. <laughs> no, I don't have a problem with making these. Anyway, um, uh, I just wanted to say that um, uh, my next video, which I will do on my version of fabric beads and hopefully will inspire you to do some more i did do a uh, fabric bead in this group it was this one um and uh, i did a little differently than uh, these ones because you're always learning more um partly i also started watching some videos from uh, boho daydream sheila and uh, i'm in her her facebook group as well and um uh, you know i learned some new things to do with some of the beads and wrapping and you know on the these little metal pieces that you get to go with the beads um they are very flexible so like this one in particular is supposed to be going around the big round ones and i bent it to go around that tube so you just be gentle with them and you can figure out lots of different ways of doing them but i do recommend watching her videos she has some excellent ones on doing the, the boho beads and you know um you know through her i i learned some new little tricks and new little ways of of putting the beads on and making them this one so cute uh and making them and i quite enjoy it and one of the most recent the script one i have some pen nibs so i attached a pen nib to it it is gl solidly glued as well as tied on so that one i quite like how it turned out and the way that one looks and as i said try lots of different things lots of different papers Lots of different, you know, 
fabrics, you know, whatever. I mean, just give it a go. I mean, the worst thing you're going to do is put it together and go, oh, I don't like it. Like this one. I mean, this is kind of a combination of my paper and the wrapping that I learned from um, Sheila. And this one, you know, is, is adorable. I think it's really adorable. And it's something new I learned. And I really like it. And I, in particular, I do like these. And they're a little fiddly to put together sometimes. But I do like these little spinny ones. And, you know, and then this one um, came together. Uh, that's dictionary. It says Borealis. It's a different definition. So that inspired me to use all the different colors of the northern lights um and you know and just go out there i know right now it's hard to get some beads i had to run to a few different stores just to try to get a few to finish up some of these so that i could you know finish up this video for you guys uh no it's not just for me but um but there's lots of different things out there um uh, I, most of these, like this is acrylic, uh, but I still think it looks lovely and it makes a cute little statement. Um, so there are lots of different ones out there. And where's my other? Yes, this one here is actually acrylic. Um, and I learned from Sheila a neat little trick for the ends of those. Um, so, I mean, they don't have to always be glass. You can just work with what you can get. Uh, just keep being creative, keep thinking of different ways to do it. And I, as I said, I will be making another video on how, on fabric wrapping and, you know, just some ideas and, you know, on how hopefully to inspire you to do more with what you would like to do. And because we all see things differently and we all will have different ideas. And I think it's great as a community that we get all those ideas out there. Oh, yes, and these are wood beads. These are quite pretty. Um, get all these ideas out there. And, you know, and then we can all explore and have fun and enjoy ourselves. Well, that's my wrap up. I have about 40 beads, wood beads here right now. I am going to list more on my Etsy. If you look it up, it's Reality Book Studio. I will put a link um, at the top of this video or in the, in the for this video. And, you know, uh, just keep creating, keep enjoying what you are doing. And if you are getting stressed, I do get that sometimes I, you know, have to walk away for a couple of days and just come back to it. I clean up my shop. I'm actually in the process of we're doing a small renovation in my shop. So that's also adding a bit of stress. So I will go back and come back and then things will be clearer. And a few coffees don't help harm me either in that regard. But anyway, so take care, everybody, and keep creating and keep enjoying life. Bye-bye.